Hey. Hey. hey! hey! Welcome out yeah. to channel14.com's Bodega Nights. I'm Jao and I'm gonna let you guys introduce yourselves. Well, no. Hey guys! Wait, that, that's Miko. Uh, Norm is there somewhere and so is Martin because you're gonna talk over each other, right? This is Martin. Norm! Yeah! And this is Miko! What's up? <laughs> right, so, um, Pokemon Go. Somebody wanted to say something about Pokemon Go. Yes. Nobody. It is amazing and I wish it was here, but it's not. So it is not that amazing. But honestly, it's a fantastic system How so far how it's working. It's really amazing how people actually walk out and do stuff. Kind of weird for me, seeing that, you know, the everyday gamer does not like the whole concept of getting off his couch. But damn it, it's fun for something overly, overly simplistic. So you're worried that gamer that Oh, games, no, I'm not worried at all. I'm just really surprised casuals. that... Wh- Oh, no, it's actually great that people are actually walking around. Like, I actually see my friends in the U.S. Uh, setting up what they call poke- Pokey Runs or something. Oh, and, like, cool. uh, Pokemon Crawls, bike, uh, Pokey Biking, or sometimes they do, like, uh, Mountaineering. Because it's interesting that the system really should use your phone data. It doesn't really like use you, you using Wi-Fi. Yeah. I'm guessing because with the Wi-Fi and the GPS really messes up. Because if I use my Wi-Fi in my house, I walk around even though I'm standing in place. Huh. But yeah, it's interesting. And so far, I actually find it amusing that uh, one of my friends who's is pretty much li- who pretty much lives in his room, thus barely goes out except for things, now walks about 20 to 30 kilometers a day. Ouch. It's insane. Like, he, his legs get sore, but it's like, why do you do this? I need to hatch my oh. eggs. Like, what? I need to hatch my eggs. I, I, the, eggs. Apparently in the game, like, uh, every time you, when you walk a certain distance, that counts towards eggs hatching and other stuff. It, it essentially, it forces you to move around. And people have tried using cars, bikes, other things. Apparently, the phone and the software is smart enough to know if you're trying to cheat. Like, you just have to have that right amount of shake on you to register it as you walking. And if you go too fast, it will think you're in a car or something else, and it'll stop registering it as you walking a certain distance. But it, again, it's really since we don't have it here, not yet. And so far, that's what everyone I see in my fi- feed is like. When is it coming out? With like everyone has rumors, these strange stories. Like someone says, "Oh, my uncle's friend's nephew's brother's sister's father works in this area, and they said it'll be coming out X time or this time." It's. It's actually crazy how much people are really just looking forward to it. and But I do understand why they're not releasing it here just yet. It's The servers at their current thing cannot handle what's going on. But I'm surprised how quickly they quote-unquote sold out, as maybe AG might put it. What do you mean? Uh, apparently, they, it, they someone was digging into the game code. And they already found some things relating to McDonald's and, others, and other franchises in Australia. Yeah, of course. It's the perfect advertising platform. Yeah, I mean, lots of people are using that. Oh, oh in my office this morning, we got a email about like Pokemon Go, marketing with Pokemon Go in my marketing office. It was weird to get this. It's like my boss tells me, oh, uh, there's this new thing out here. Can you do some research? Like I, tell, like, I know everything about this boss. This is what we do. I like go for like a 30-minute spill. She just stares at me. I don't understand three fourths the thing you said, but whatever it is, put on paper and send it back to me. Okay. It's the uh, <laughs> it's, it's the idea of making it a freaking Pokestop stop or whatever, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, that way, like Poke people show up. Are, yep. yep. And no, here's the thing: like, if you have this thing called a lure, which you can only use in Poke stops, which improves the chance of Pokemon appearing for thirty minutes. And I actually ran the numbers. It cost us about $18 per day to have it running for our entire opening period. And huh. based on current stats from coffee shops, libraries, other places in the U.S., they, at the minimum, increased their daily profits by 50%. Yeah, but, um, I don't know, consumer habits are very different here. Oh, yeah, it is. But like, I think that the fact that it forced it's a cheap thing that you can go to, the fact you don't have to pay for these lures and things which are not free unless you go to like X amount of Pokestops and hope it appears. I'm only really interested in the one real question for Pokemon appearing here in the Philippines. It's 
which and telco is going to allow it for free both of them uh, most likely well no. right now there i i found cell phone shops in i think sm who were kind of already mentioning oh for pokemon go you need at least this phone so they have like pokemon packages like Oh, this phone for like four, I think like four thousand and five thousand pesos. This is just hits minimum specs to play Pokemon Go. If you want to upgrade your phone to play, yeah, but I'm talking about free data for Pokemon oh, free Go. Free data. Oh, the, I I don't know if any of them are going to do that unless they have some really they, weird tie up. One of them does. They um they do. They already did the whole free data for Clash of Clans. Remember? Oh yeah, no. the most well, inappropriately acronym game. It's cheaper data. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's yeah. cheaper data. It's, uh, it's I, I really hate it. And like on Third World Linux, we talk about this a lot. Uh, how it is... Net neutrality is dead on the Philippines. Yeah, how net neutrality is dead on arrival. Yep. And it's really bad for a little independent podcasting, like... Us? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's really I, bad for us. Bodega Nights. Oh, it, it's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> Radio Nord. Howdy. <laughs> Jabber talk. Well, no, Jabber talk's doing pretty well. No, it's not. Radio norm. Radio norms better. Um, what are we having episodes? I owe episodes to you people, my audience of two. <laughs> uh, Come on, six seasons and a spoken word tour. Make it happen. We're working on it. Uh, I'm actually rewriting a few of the episodes I was supposed to be recording, and. And I just really, whenever I, tr- I find, uh, an empty block of time, uh, it gets eaten up very, very quickly by something else, you know, life gets in the way and whatnot. So I owe you guys that, uh, what else? But, uh, oh. yeah, that's oh, okay, it. Okay. I was Did- going to ask, how was the concert last week? Will it be in an episode? Uh, no, not really. I, Wait, I don't know concert? yet. Um, uh, I had to do. Uh, I had to attend a concert for work. You know, when you said that you're alive now, I thought you're going to do a Facebook Live video. Oh, I did. Actually, I did. yeah, you did. Yeah, I, I did. did not. See, Wait, I did not get did? the notification that you're you're live on Facebook. <laughs> I, I did. I went live for about three minutes before my phone told me I was five percent down battery. That sounds like a good episode of Radio Norm. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. <laughs> those, those, those three live minutes just have there's, the audio. There's, there's three live minutes, and then there's a video of the thing uh, saved on Facebook on the feed. Ah, so I gotta check that out some point. You have one song <laughs> from the entire I, concert. Actually, talking about the whole like uh, phone dying, that's also one thing that has sha- that's also a new item that's now in demand in the USA. Uh, because dying people's phones, phones are dying because phones are dying so quickly because they're using them a lot playing the Pokemon game. People have now realized that hey, these bat, these uh, power ba- these power banks are actually useful because over there they don't sell them as a way to recharge your phone. They call them like phone life extenders or something. They don't advertise them as oh, this can you use this to recharge your phone. It's like they hmm. ex- they're just like two thousand five hundred amps, three thousand five. I think the biggest I saw was just about six eight thousand. Wait, we were just on Pokemon Go earlier. What happened to batteries? Why are we? Oh here? no, no. Like, uh, it's that game just eats a ton of battery because you're ah. using mobile data, GPS things, all this other stuff is going on. It's using sound, vibration. It's just going the whole shebang. So suddenly, people realize that my phone only survives two, three hours of playtime. Yeah, it's, it's uh, Nintendo took like twenty years trying to figure out how to use a mobile phone to the fullest. So now they are. You think that means they'll be? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it wasn't even it wasn't even it's not Nintendo. Even them. It's Ni- it's Niatic who made it. Right? Uh, Niatic just got their IP and essentially is making a whole system based off Ingress. Also, a very fun game. A little I complicated, have, but fun. I'm actually curious. Like, how high did Niantic's stock market price go? Because not all much, I'm hearing because about people is Nintendo. Have, because people don't know who they are. They just think, <laughs> oh, Nintendo's doing this. So Nintendo's getting all the stock money. But yeah. Niatic is making all the in-app purchase money, at least 70% of it. But are they a publicly listed corporation? Are they? I well, mean, they are. They should. I don't know if their stocks really went up because people think this is more Nintendo's gig than them. The same way people forget that uh, Fallout New Vegas is not Bethesda. But Obsidian. I'm pretty sure everybody's trying to figure out how to make their own Pokemon Go now. 
Oh gosh, I saw all the parodies like, oh, play Mario Kart Go, play GTA Go, play this, play Skyrim Go. It's like, it's like, it's like a whole bunch of parodies. I'm like, I know one day one of these things will become a thing. There's even a joke that, hey, CS Go Go. <laughs> What's that? CS Go Go? I thought, uh, CS- I, th- I, thought I gave you that joke. <laughs> <laughs> this is about the, how, how the people that are behind Valve is, uh, it's their turn now. Because they have so it's CSGO's kind of like, property for years. So it's kind of like Counter Strike, because it is. Oh yeah, Niantic is uh, it's a spin off of Alphabet? Google Alphabet, whatever, yep. whatever. Yeah, uh, their division that handled their weird GPS and game stuff things. Wow, Niantic's under Google. Yeah, more or less. That's why. They, that's why nobody's that's heard why of them yet. Make, that's why they make use of the Google Maps technology to mark things. Pokestops are essentially landmarks. As long as it's something that's recognized on Google Map, it has a high probability to be a Pokestop or a gym. <laughs> it, it, it's so much so that there's like a gym in the middle of the ocean in, uh, like off the coast of Australia because some weird fountain or post out there is part of Google Maps. So the video game's like, oh, this must be an important place. Let's put a gym here. It's about 100 or 150 meters away from shore. So people rent kayaks to go out there to win that gym and go back to shore. <laughs> it is weird. <laughs> but I mean, I see like how so much space get accidentally marked or added into other things just because, oh, Google says this is important. I mean, one of my zombie games, yeah, one of my zombie games mm-hmm. uh, marked a local punko punko near my house as a restaurant. That I can scavenge for equipment. It's like, oh, check this out. It's a restaurant. Like, okay, zombies are here. I'm like, I'm just like picturing like a freaking zombie hiding by a punko punko. Like, grr, want my supplies? For the people that have no idea what Miko is talking about, it is. How would you describe a punko punko? Oh, punko punko is. It's like str- I guess str- I guess we can call it street uh, street side food. It's literally like a bunch of chairs. A Sometimes there's a table, sometimes they're not, and some guy cooking from a cart. Yeah. I, I actually... Is there a English term for that? I mean, both Bunko Bunko literally translates to, like, sit-sit, right? Yeah. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. What's it called Manila? I'm not even sure they have those. Like, they have them. Do you have those, Norm? Martin? What? Is there a Punko Punko in your place? I Norm, no I idea. need answers. Is oh, there damn. a sit-sit? It's like a... Uh, like like, like a cheap table. Just, just a cheap table and... Food. What? Do you do you buy the food or it's yeah? Just yeah, free? yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty horrible business. Like, here's some free food for you. Why do I never make money here? <laughs> so basically, Carinderias, right? No, no, no. It's not, it, it's not building. It's literally food? like some guy with a cart going around, then he sets up like tables and chairs, then he just takes those and all brings it home. It, it just appears for like one to three hours, then disappears. Uh, oh, I haven't seen one yet. But yeah, dude. So it's, it's, it's just just think of it as like uh, it's like literally on a sidewalk, and it's just a table with like barbecue on it and rice and stuff. And then you know, pay, and they give you your portion, and then you're and then you sit somewhere and eat. And yes, you're full. But yeah, I'm pretty sure there. I, I think there should be one Manila because we didn't we eat there near the college at one point, like first or second year. Like there was something like that nearby. Yeah, no, the no? cart, the cart businesses in Manila aren't short term, and they can't really pack up and leave at any point in time that they wish. They have to actually be registered for a specific location, and there goes yeah. the dogs in my neighborhood. Hey, doggy. Nico, dude, the one that oh sorry, uh, the the one that you were talking about earlier. It yeah. looks really swanky. It looks like an actual carinderia. Like it isn't a dude that set something up. Yeah, by it, a it's a lot. It's a lot more fancier than it is. In fairness, but it, it still is a punko punko. It's just higher grade. It's like below a carinderia, but above what it is. So <laughs> it, it's kind of like that. That there are actually a few around that area. Some look some pre- some look really legit. And it's surprising me how they disappear after a few hours and just reappear magically. Yeah. Their hours are whenever they feel like it. Uh, sure. But like, there are some places like downtown, right? That, oh, yeah. You know, like all of a sudden you have a... There are a lot of places downtown where all of a sudden you just have a barbecue like station or whatever along the side of the road. And then you go into like a really shady looking house and eat there. I will honestly say I did all that except for the shady-looking house. 
I'd eat there. <laughs> well, not, not, not shady like I'm going to get stabbed shady, but shady <laughs> like this house, th- this house looks like it was built in the 1940s and is about to fall apart. Oh, okay, okay. Like one of those. Not, sl- like, <laughs> not slim shady. Fine, not, not, not shady, more uh, shaded. dubious structural integrity. Shall we a say? dilapidated <laughs> boat. I mean, a dilapidated boat? house. <laughs> we d- we have flooding, but it's not that much for a boat to be there. <laughs> Except for that time, it really floods. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, by then, it is really floods. And I, I maintain, though, that like if Cebu ever has an Undoi level like rain event or whatever, like the city is going to be underwater, dude. Yeah. Because I mean, the highest point of the city is not that high. <laughs> Yeah, but like, how how long was the con- like how long was it continuously raining? Um, for Yolanda, Undoi, 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 oh, Undoi. I was in school, so it was like almost two hours or so, or half one and a half hour. Or, if I remember, yeah. it wasn't like the how long it was, but the sheer volume within that span of time. Exactly. Um, it was it felt, so. It felt a lot longer than two hours, dude. I think really? it was, I think it was officially eight hours long, but there was like a three or four hour period where it was just intense and just like water yeah. was just coming down like intense rain. That that's a very horrible description. It was like so horrible. It was so strong. It's like the man upstairs decided to turn on the faucet and said, "Yep, it's gonna happen today. <laughs> it's going down for real." I hope that guy told to make the boat, but nope, he did not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, like, um, what, what if no one, what, what if no one ever to... bothered? <laughs> but in, like, areas like, um, gosh, what was, uh, areas like Kainta, right? Like, the floods yeah. there got really bad. Like, um, like, they reached the second floors of houses and stuff. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. I remember one yeah. where I saw the cars were gone. I thought it was photoshopped until my friend showed me photos from other angles. Like, oh, okay, yeah, that place underwater. Right? Wow! So like, and then I saw. A I, boat. I don't know, man. It was like, if if it was about eight hours, maybe. Um, and let's just say that, uh, like the yeah. one in Cebu was i don't know officially like three hours maybe yeah like it was about three hours and it was what almost waist deep in some, in parts some of the places city? it was weights but some it really went over their head Ooh. oh yeah like um to name that place like the uh es fortuna yeah it went over your head there Ooh. i know because that's one of the few times i saw the road nope four by four do not care going the other way yeah dude so like okay um if two to three hours of rain can do that to well mandawe then i'm really scared for an undoi yep i actually <laughs> after seeing that i was actually half tempted to actually see if i can find pontoons for my car <laughs> no it's like the- okay quickly strap it on it i can't control anything but at least my car can just float away with me <laughs> Yeah. Besides being underwater. But like ideally, right? You're only supposed to go to like half the height of your wheels. Uh, for most cars, yeah. But, but I mean, some cars like what I use, you can actually go pretty deep in. And in all my friends' cars, you can go in like the car is pretty much submerged just because it runs that weird snorkel thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. But of course, the issue is if you stop, your car's kind of dead. Right. You have to just keep on going and. When cars is like uh, in front of you tried to make it and didn't, you now have this huge blockade in your way. And one way or another, if your car would theoretically make it through, because of all the other cars that didn't make it through, you'd be stuck there anyway. And here we are talking about floods and rain again. <laughs> then you see the Kia Pride going away. This is the Bodega Nights equivalent of small talk, ladies and gentlemen. We're back to the weather. I saw a car get swept away from the floods. It was kind of sad and funny at the same point because it was like a parked car. And it's like, hey, the rain's getting stronger. We're like saying, do you think that car will fly, will like just float away? Five minutes later, whoop, there it goes. The huh. irony is, when you combine the words sad and funny, you get sunny. <laughs> Which that day was not. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> but but yeah. you wanted to talk about history con. 
Wait, I did? Hey, Miko, are you excited for History Con? Yep, and you know what I'm also excited about, Martin? What, Miko? All that them there wrestling in History Con. Wrestling motor truckers? Yeah. Yep. On the History Con, this August 2016, prepare Manila for the new wrestling federation that I am not totally part of, but I will watch anyway. The Manila Wrestling Federation. So like, I think I got con? that right. <laughs> but if you guys are going to... history of wrestling? Yeah, I also talk about the history of Philippine wrestling. Well, specifically 2015 and 2014. Ah, such a deep history. Very, very deep. So deep. That put her ass to sleep. So over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's deeper than the kiddie pool. Yeah. But, but what's the other wrestling federation? What? What are, what are, you, what are you talking Wait, about? Uh, it's being called Manila Wrestling Federation. So... Currently, we got the PWR. We have enough wrestlers for right? two federations. Right. So wait, 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 wait. Uh, uh, let, let, apparently, let me get, yes. Let me get this straight. There is PWR and yes. there is Power. MWF. Yes. And their first quote unquote show would be within HistoryCon. Apparently, Do you Why think don't the aliens guy will be there? I hope so. <laughs> Only reason I'll go to HistoryCon outside wrestling. I would so get his autograph. Wait, wait. So, so I, why are there two different? Why are there two different promotions in a tiny little country that doesn't really care very much about professional wrestling? Zhao, that's a very good question that I want to ask myself. You can chat to Sulin Jobber Talks. You should check out that show. Dear listeners of Channel14.com, we would like to ask you, (laughs) is the Philippines ready for two wrestling federations? Are you ready to rumble? With two wrestling yeah. federations! Yeah. One is power and the other is that other thing. The MWR? Murder! <laughs> MWR. <laughs> um, how, how do you do that? Like, like PWR is like power and the other one's MUF? MILF! Oh, no, MURF! 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 MURKA! MURKA! <laughs> Damn it, it guys! Like a, it sounds like a dog. I hope they're not <laughs> listening. <laughs> I'm so gonna be dead <laughs> in the next show, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know, right? Like it could be, it could be great. You know. I actually thought those two were just part of the same thing. They just had like two different brandings. I was. You know what? Uh, part of me feels like this is the biggest swerve in Philippine wrestling history. That yes, they are one company. They're making it look like they're separate brands. That's the biggest, <laughs> like, that's the biggest angle of all time, guys. <laughs> so they're pulling, I'm like, so like that. Dude. So, uh, who wants to bet on this? Y- you mm-hmm. don't have to say it on the show. You can contact us at contact at channel14.com or directly at this, this, but they're gonna have a email on its own. No. Sure. <laughs> I think. But they're gonna have channel14.com. I'm sure that exists. Send us a tweet. So if it doesn't, it will by the end, by this time it's uploaded. And if we oh, won't hey. make it, Mark will. Check out our YouTube page. <laughs> We're really doing it this, exists. aren't we? It exists. <laughs> I okay, heard we history? also have a Google Plus, guys. We have a Google Stop Plus. Stop pushing Google Plus. It's not going to happen. Have, we actually have other podcasts. Like Radio Norm Season and 2.5. Jobber Talk. Keep it going. And Saxel Spigs. What? <laughs> yeah, it's been know, a while since Paolo did an episode of that, that one, but thing. it's also been a while since I did my thing. But finally, I am getting time because the bar is open, other things are done. Now I just have to fight a ISP and other things, and then I'll almost have free time possibly in the future. Almost. For right. Minecraft Mondays! <laughs> and other stuff, because I'm, I actually found lots of my old childhood during the uh, sale. So I essentially spent like two, three thousand pesos on getting more things of my childhood, including one game that I have never finished and never found again because apparently the name is different. All right, so look out for Paulus Biggs coming out soonish. Paulus Biggs is a actual pot. It's a podcast. Let's let's play. It is not actually pigs. Watch out it? for season two when it's we actually a... have enough fun for pigs. <laughs> it's a it's it's a Paulo plays indie games. Yeah. Right, so it's like his. What's his, the uh, other S? Games. Sexy. Paolo Indie Games. Oh, Paolo plays Indie Games S. Sexy. It's like, maybe it's like one of those S class things. Was right. Right in Japanese games, S is the highest thing. <laughs> I thought yeah. it was X. 
No, no, no. That's only for Mega Man, I think. And America. America! So it's Mega like... Man, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's like Paolo is like the iPhone with an what? S. What? <laughs> no, I'm mean not making it. slightly improved, but not enough? <laughs> not enough to warrant his own version number? <laughs> oh, gosh. What do you think... What do you think would have happened if, like, Paolo actually caught that uh, weird post AG made a few days ago about a snake you know attacking what? his car- cage? You know what I think? I think it'll be... Yeah, so what? we lost Martin? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, just... Yeah. Were you under the I impression that happened. we were going to end the podcast on that? Nah. <laughs> we won't. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, we got you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, Martin, we got you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no continue. There, there isn't any context. There, there, there isn't any context for the stories, right? Um, yep. Yeah. So, a couple of no, what? Like, yeah, a couple of days ago, like AG posts a picture on Facebook. No, no, um, it's a post first. The the photo came in like three hours later or something. Well, yeah, there was a post where he said like a snake ate my bird and like, huh? And it's currently in the cage. What do I do? And we were all like, okay, so this is either... Nico's like, this is some sort of reference to something. And I was like, oh, he's playing with sexual innuendo. Something I thought he grew out of after high school. But <laughs> a couple of hours later, like... Post a picture. <laughs> he posts a picture of his birdcage with, like, one bird. And I know that they have two birds in there. And a and snake. Underneath that bird. <laughs> with a bridge-shaped lump in its stomach. <laughs> yeah. What was what was it? Was it Ag or his sister that said we used to have two birds in this cage, and now we have one bird and a snake with a bird-sized belly? It was Ag <laughs> who said that one. I I honestly thought when that post came out, like, okay, this has to be some sort of like reference or some sort of like dank meme he's referring to that I've not seen the longest time. You know, you know what I was thinking <clears throat> the entire time is like, why is the other bird still in that cage? <laughs> Other birds like, Guys. man, I've seen some things, man. That thing do not scare me no more. <laughs> it's still in shock. Like, <laughs> if yeah. I don't move, maybe it won't know. <laughs> it senses movement and fear. I have a lot of both right now. <laughs> if I hide, Must... it knows I'm afraid. <laughs> so I'll stay out here and stand my ground. <laughs> it's my only move is to not move. And that's where we also learned that there is an actual animal service system, and they apparently have a number, which we don't know. I'm, I'm going to look that up <laughs> while you guys continue talking about the snake in a cage. How did the snake yeah, get into was, the cage, dude? That was like the weirdest thing. I have thing. no idea. I mean, I'd like Good to think question. that these cages have pretty... The bars are really like well-spaced that birds can't get out of them. So, And a snake is a lot bigger than a bird. I mean, how, I'm still wondering how did this get into this house? <laughs> it was it was outside, right? Like the the bird cage is by the garage. Is it by the garage? I mean, when I saw the picture, it looked like it was inside the house. But even then, I mean, I never remember him mentioning that. Oh yeah, there's snakes all around my house. Oh, he has a there's like a big empty lot next to be behind behind his house. Oh yeah, I remember that and place. Dude. Like big empty lots usually mean snakes, or in my case, freaking cockroaches and mosquitoes. And in Paolo's case, apparently a few crocodiles. Like behind his house? That that big, like, mountain thing? I don't know. Apparently he has crocodiles. I don't know if that's in his office or his house, but he says he has crocodiles in his backyard or something. Can't be his house, dude. I used to live in that village, and... Then you didn't even know he was there for how many years? <laughs> yeah, years. <laughs> like, you, like, you never knew he was there until, like, I think a few years into college. Like, you live there? <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny. <laughs> He's like, yeah, in unit blah, blah, blah. What? We were near like a hundred meters away from each other. Hmm? You're like a hundred meters away from each other or something. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Which is still not Wait, far enough to not hear Paolo. What unit? What? I don't get it. <laughs> You're in college? No, no, no. This is like back in their place here in Cebu where apparently they live so close together, but they never knew about it until they met each other. After college? Well, no, in college. It's like somewhere a few years. After meeting each other, they discover, oh, Holy. we're neighbors. <laughs> yeah, dude, that, was, that was really weird. Which is kind of funny because it's hard to ignore Paolo. Do you think, like, Jao for the longest time just thought there was, like, a weird wailing noise at night and just accepted the fact? <laughs> 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 no, that's just a joke. It's like a, it's a ghost. Although, like, Paolo seems, seems uh, legit. like, he, he's very, like, reclusive, though. Like, he doesn't, he doesn't go out of his house except 
to go to like school. See, or... and you somehow think that you can't. There might not be crocodiles, but there is. But you, saw, you see how small his house is? Like he doesn't have a backyard. He has something back there. At least I saw some yeah. sort of passageway leading to some sort of secret place in the back. You know, Knowing I Paolo, was... I did not want to investigate further. Dude, that thing is but... like two, three square meters big. They have a few snakes, a few crocodiles, right? Yeah, they have snakes, crocodiles, and some some spiders. I so don't anyway, know if they have spiders, uh, but yeah, he has creepy crawlies. And AG now has a pet snake, or had a pet snake for me for a while. He had a bird. For... Now he has a snake and a bird. <laughs> he had birds. Now he has a snake and a bird. Um, what do you call it? Although they called uh, Pasig City's emergency services, and they sent some animal control people. So, so the city of Pasig has animal control, which is good. I wonder how many times they get called in about snakes coming into bird cages. How did this snake get into the bird cage? Like I'm looking at the picture again. I, I've seen it, and it it doesn't make any sense. I, I I'm assuming the snake somehow pushed the like gate the like the bird cage door open somehow and just like popped itself in. Huh. Because <clears throat> I mean, the was, snake couldn't get out. But it was thin when it got in, so now it can't <laughs> get out. <laughs> What? <laughs> Norm, there's kids listening. Okay, kids, be careful. There might be snakes in your birdcage. <laughs> they can slip in, but they just can't get out until like after a few hours. <laughs> you have to call the government to get your snake out. <laughs> They're going to pull it out like with their bare hands, I guess. How else do you put it out? With I heard a... there's multiple ways. But Apparently, wait, one is calling like animal a... services. Yeah. <laughs> Child are, services um... waiting. <clears throat> don't, don't they have, like, clamps and stuff to handle, like, poisonous snakes? There are. I, I know those snakes. exist, but I don't know if we have those here. Because we actually called animal control once because we had this gigantic constrictor in the hotel once. What uh-huh. happened? Oh, uh, It was a huge constrictor. It was, like, a 12-foot constrictor. That did... thing was insanely huge. How did it get in your hotel? Uh, because our hotels buy wildlife. Ah. Uh. Anyway, yeah, Hughes Constrictor, we saw it like, well, okay, this one's big. So we called services. They they first, like, a guy came in, looked in, like, dang, that's a big snake. Yeah, I need to call more from all help. And then, like, two other guys come in, they go, dang, that's a big snake. Yeah, we're going to have to call a specialist for this one. And, like, three hours later, the specialist is with a guy with a big net. Like, toss it on the snake, they pick it up, and, yep, okay, we got this. We literally waited, like, three Four hours for a guy to go and say, yeah, get the net. And it was crazy. That thing was like jumping around when they throw the net. Apparently, snakes do not like having nets on them. Not one bit. Things you learn. (laughs) I do wonder what they did with that huge constrictor, though. Probably killed it. Gonna check their, gonna check like their Facebook page. We eat well tonight, boys. (laughs) (laughs) And like all of a sudden, their wives have like leather bags and stuff. (laughs) Dude, I, I, that size of that snake, I could have made like what the big, like a gigantic yet oddly shaped leather bag. <laughs> I honestly, that's like I mean, we're used to having snakes pop up every now and then. Like I'd see these small, like foot long, like green snakes, garden stuff. When I saw this, I'm like, wow, okay, that thing is huge. Is that a legitimate yeah. snake? Yeah, it's like something straight out of Hollywood, it except is... it looked really nice and friendly. Except it... when it looked like it wanted to give you a hug. It's a sneaky snake skull. This is it though. <laughs> Fun times, fun times. Like that weird time that the roof set on fire because of a solar panel. Because <laughs> it's a solar panel, that's why the roof's on fire. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. Like, uh, I remember that. Like, some guy, uh, one guy came in, like, he's like all, like, uh, panting and panting, trying to grab the phone, like, oh, what's happening? Oh, like, the roof's on fire. Oh, what happened? Oh, the solar panel exploded. How'd that happen? Apparently it was too hot or something. Then, yeah, yeah. they checked out. Apparently, it got, the solar panel got so hot, the battery burst. It really confused me because I thought that's something that should have been tested with solar panels. You know, them being under the sun. Yeah. Did you get it in China? No, actually not. This one was actually proudly made in Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't get as hot there. You know? <laughs> like, it is like a little bit norther. I- I'm actually curious. Like, do you think there? I wonder if there's like a warning. Please do not put under direct sunlight. <laughs> it's just like a protection for it's them. A solar you can't panel, sue us. We, we give you a warning. I'm not supposed to put it under direct sunlight, despite it being a solar panel. Yeah, I like that. Oh, go ahead, Nick. Yeah, I like think they just do that, like just a way to protect them. Like, 
we know this is solar panel, but it's not intended for such use. But you could use it for such. But we're suggesting you don't type thing. It's like one of those weird, like, American warnings that it seems really dumb why it's there. Yeah, but then it was that one McDonald's case that defined, like, what's it? Oh, gosh. That, that, that... When the McDonald's cup looked like NASCARs with, like, all the fishing versions of warning hot drink. Yeah, because th there was, like, this one landmark case that had to do with... Uh, coffee uh, being spilled on that one lady at the drive-thru or something. Yep. But actually, I looked into that. In fairness, the coffee was actually too hot. Yeah, that way, like, it stays warmer for longer. <clears throat> That's what McDonald's does with their coffee. So there was a there was a cause of action there, but, you know. Yep. I actually like to think, like, I mean, that sounds like something that people should realize. I mean, when if you're in a moving vehicle and you're getting hot coffee, you'd probably want to make sure that... Uh, you don't suddenly jolt forward while holding it. <coughs> oh, do you think that happens in those Starbucks drive throughs Maybe. It, it You've only like had the, the one. Yeah. yeah, we have that yeah. one drive through Have you ever heard a case there where some person burnt their lap because they drove out of the drive through Isn't... No. Was, what, was it the granny? <laughs> the, the McDonald's... No, that's the McDonald's case. That's yeah. all I know. You, all you know is it was a granny? Yes, uh, not the I stunt granny it. though. Not that stunt granny from Wrestling Secrets Exposed. This is a Wait, legit when we, granny. Um, when, when, when you use the word case, driving out of a drive through do you mean cases in like something filed before the court? Or cases in this happened? Like case hmm. this happened. Oh, I wouldn't know. I haven't <clears> heard of anything. I mean, I'd like to think that we wouldn't have to resort to court things. I'd like to think that some sort of settlement we done prior, that ever occurring... Or are we actually pretty sue happy? I'm not actually sure about our suing culture here, but no, I not, do know our no, sewing really. culture. <laughs> yeah, it's very um, big, apparently. There is. You have a lot of. I'll, I'll get back to that. Um, when it comes to torts and stuff, we're not as crazy as the U.S. No, not not really. I mean, how crazy are we? Well, a lot of uh, a lot of cases involving like damages and all that. Like a lot of the the, the stuff that Americans will sue for that that sort of field a lot of our cases from there come from a long time ago when we were under the americans um eventually it just became a lot of uh the word in <laughs> filipino is pinagusapan lang norm yeah. translate what um, <laughs> just talking discarte pinagusapan lang ganun. yeah right discussions yeah off court settlements yeah the 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 word that American people use is out of court settlements. To us, it's just uh, parang dinaan nilang sa usap, parang gano, or dinaan nilang sa usapan, which which sounds a lot less, uh, which sounds a lot less official and fancy, but functions as the same thing. Yeah, it's a uh, out of court settlement. <laughs> you know, we've we've discussed it outside of court. We're fine now. And <laughs> we've settled. Yeah, we've settled. <laughs> we have um, talked about it, and I realize money must be provided. We have talked about all. it. <laughs> We have reached agreement without your help mediating. Thank you. Do we still get yeah. paid? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you people, stop settling out of court. We need your money. Actually, you bill per man hour, so... <laughs> yeah. You don't actually lose money. And you do have some cases where you absolutely do have to go to court. Like a lot of family cases, you do need to go to court. Yes. I get an official uh, judge... Like uh, what is that? Uh, no, we don't have a judge's jury decision. Here. Yeah, judge's decision. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a court order, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's um, so much. A decree, that sort of thing. So, yeah, um, there was there was this one situation. Uh, no, let's not get into it because it involves like annulments and divorce and stuff. Uh, so going back to the sewing thing on the island that you work in, I mean, not yes. that you work. The, yeah, on, on, on the island. Well, I, in fairness, I do I do live in a separate island from where I work. <laughs> yeah. Yes, people, that is how far I travel. I go to other islands. How's your commute? Dude, your commute is like 45 <laughs> minutes on a bad day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mine is two hours on a good day. <laughs> 45 minutes of which is spent getting out of the parking lot, I guess. <laughs> um, but, like, there's this one place going towards... Uh, going towards... There's, there's that restaurant... Um, on the far side of the island that's facing, that's facing downtown. Uh, there's that restaurant called Lantau. Yeah. That, yeah, that, that, that area. 
that half of the island. Like, there's that one street that's just full of people that were displaced when a lot of the sewing factories and stuff moved out of the economic zone in Mactan. Yeah. Right? And they do really good work, and they do it really cheap. Well, I mean, there's just... If you think about it, like the ma- their areas are saturated with so much skilled craftsmen, you have to try to undercut the other guy just to get a job. Yeah, it's it's uh like this the stuff they the the work they do there is really good. It is shockingly good. <laughs> In a shockingly low price, Norm, get on that. No, learn how to sew, Norm. <laughs> no, no, I have I actually I actually have to find manufacturers at the shockingly low price. Yeah, you can find price. them right there. <laughs> You can find them right there, you know. Make it Norm So Shop. I'm not willing to go that well, so far you for that long. low price. <clears throat> there was a uh, like I, I spent a lot more time downtown now, and like stuff there is really cheap, you know. Oh yeah, it is. Well, in fairness, like the of all my hobbies, for some reason, I'm always brought back to the same like uh, area in downtown where I just get like a uh, foam hardware and other stuff to make like costumes, uniforms, and other stuff. But yeah, as every time I go by there, I try to explore a little bit more. And yeah, you can find some amazing deals. Or if you speak like me, you just get ripped off as much as you can. <laughs> <laughs> they give you three prices. They give you local price. They give you local English-speaking price. And they give you, this guy looks like he's from the West. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, wait, White wh- wh- boy. Where do, you, uh, where do you go for your stuff, if you for don't where? mind me asking? Uh, which ones? Like, uh, most of my fabrics I actually get from that place, uh, Progress or something. Oh, yeah, they're pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Progress, Chester, and right. this strange Chinese place. I forgot what its name was. But it's near Progress. Also got lots of stuff, and it's surprisingly cheap. Like, I literally just buy excess just so I don't have to go back for a long while. Yeah. But there are, like, some weird patterns that show up there. It's, like, I one time I went there and saw this weird leatherette that looked like it was for like a gucci bag or something mm. they have these weird things they just pops up randomly they're not part of their common list even like their zippers they have like some fancy ones pop up every now and then they have their usual stuff and they end up with these weird cartoon prints every now and then like i saw one time i went there i saw a guy literally buy about what a hundred meters worth of spongebob fabric Whoa! it was weird it's like you see this like a uh, old gentleman buy like Two or meters. three rolls of like this litty SpongeBob fabric. It was just SpongeBob and Patrick on a blue background, and like it looked legit, but you know it can't be licensed material. <laughs> Not at the price oh. that they're. <laughs> <laughs> Not the price they were selling it. Like I was surprised it actually looked like I was expecting like you know SpongeBob but with Simpsons style colors. Like when you saw those weird like uh, Chinese fake bags, like. Oh, look, it's Pikachu, but it's actually like a Batman on a Pikachu body or something. Or those weird China toys where it's the <laughs> Justice League with Batman, Superman, Janitor, and Cobra Commander. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, actually remember getting those toys when I was younger. They were weird. <laughs> we should, like, the next time the next time everybody comes to Cebu, we should all just take a trip downtown and see how far we can make, like, 500 pesos go. Why not? Just make sure we leave our phones and stuff. Yeah. Like, as much as possible, try <laughs> to not look like you're foreign. Oh, my Martin, God. Martin, as much as possible, try to look colored. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we're not bringing <laughs> Martin along, dude. <laughs> Will, that Bring Martin along, like, Will that make him more or <laughs> less <white>. foreign, though? <laughs> if you color Martin, see, more or less. They'll, they'll see Norm, and he'll think that like Norm's our boss, and like we're just the guys going around doing <laughs> stuff for him. <laughs> We're like his peons, his uh, aides, and like his and like Martin is like his foreign investor friend. Like yes, yes, this is what you should buy. Go, go, get these things. Yes, yes, this is where uh, this is where we're gonna be setting up the business. We're just gonna buy every single one of their shops. <laughs> then we make a then we visit the place where all the sewing's done, and Norm just opens up, you know, sew everyone. Yeah, I'm not even going so to sew everyone. I'm not even gonna uh, buy them out. I'm just gonna build a building around it. <laughs> Start charging them rent to get Norm out. Just makes the, Norm just makes a great wall around them. Yes. I did not buy your land, but I bought everything around you. It is the great wall of commerce. <laughs> we will also call it Normland. I shall tax them for every breath they take. And every move they make? Yes. He'll be watching them. 
Like and that's brother. what the radio normal be all about. It's just like Norm's journal about him watching the workers. Yep, 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 yep. Day seven, I think they've finally broken. Day twenty, oh dear God, rescue has come. Trying to find help. Day three, found. Day thirty, found new investor. <laughs> Made wall bigger. Day, f- day forty, profit.